Uh, in this video we're going to talk about uh, dynamic DNS and before we do that just a quick recap on DNS itself. Uh, DNS provides a simple name to IP address translation. You give it a name and you get back an IP address and if we just go to ping command and type ping and the name uh, it goes off to a DNS, ser DNS server and gets the IP address associated with that name and then it pings that IP address and we can see it here. Now IP addresses associated with web servers and mail servers on the internet are static IP addresses which means they're fixed and so the name to IP address relationship is a constant. Those uh, name IP address records uh, assigned to DNS tend to be manually assigned but if you go to large corporate internal networks or small home networks, small home business networks then the IP addresses associated with the machines on those networks tend to be dynamic. Uh, they're assigned by a service called DHCP and on small business networks they, that tends to be the built into the home router. And for large corporate networks running their own DNS service the ability to update the DNS records as the IP address changes uh, which is dynamic DNS has been available since certainly 2003 and maybe even as uh, early as 2000 so on those networks the client computer will boot up it will go to DHCP get an IP address and then it will then go to the DNS server and update that DNS server with the new IP address and that's what we call dynamic DNS and say that has been available for quite a long time now I don't want to talk about uh, dynamic DNS as applied to large corporate networks. We can talk about dynamic DNS as, apl as applied to small business and home networks and why it's used and how it actually works. Now I've got a, a little diagram here and we've got a machine here with an IP address and, and port and this is running a service. Maybe it's a web server, maybe it's a security, uh, security camera service. And we've got the NAT router which basically protects this machine from the internet and it's got an external IP address and external port and we've got an external client here on the internet that wants access to this service running here. Now to do that what we use is a technique called port forwarding which makes this service available on the internet and what it does is effectively makes makes this uh, server appear to be on this port, on this IP address. So to connect to this server we effectively connect to this external IP address. Now I'm not going to cover port forwarding, we, it's covered in another article which you can read on the on the website how port forwarding works but first we need to configure port forwarding otherwise it's not going to work at all. Now once port forwarding is configured we can connect this client to this machine by using this IP address and we don't need a dynamic DNS um, configured for any of this to work. Uh, that will work perfectly well. The only problem with that is that this external IP address may, well I say may, often does change. It's actually allocated by the ISP and most ISPs use dynamic IP, address, IP addresses for this. So you could give the external use of the IP address of this uh, NAT router but it might work one day and the next day it might not work because the IP address has changed and that's why you need a dynamic DNS server. Now what you do with a dynamic DNS server is effectively when this IP address changes it updates the records on the dynamic DNS server and when you want to access this machine you first go to the DNS server get the IP address from the DNS server and then you access the machine. Now, these dynamic DNS servers are provided by external companies, external service providers, and so you'll need to sign up with a, a service provider to use dynamic DNS. Now, it's quite a simple process. Here's the sign-up form. This is for a, a no IP account. Um, basically, you're allocated a host name, or you assign yourself a host name, it's the same as your username, on their network. So my um, name is stevesnetguide.ddns.net so that's what my client would type into the web browser or whatever application they were using. Now for this to work you need to then configure your router 
to use this so we need to configure our router to update this record and so to do that we go to our router and we go to the dynamic DNS section and we configure it with the information the username and the password and the IP address of the service provider we're use, using. Now my router lets me choose from the main service providers. Now most modern routers um, support dynamic DNS and so it's, it's a simple matter to set it up once you've uh, signed up for an account. Now if your router doesn't support dynamic DNS most of these providers will provide you with a dynamic DNS client and what that dynamic DNS client does it does the same as the router would do it basically updates the records on the DNS server it sits somewhere here in your internal network and it has to be on the machine that's always running because the service has to be always running and what it does is periodically goes out and checks your IP address and then it goes and updates the records on the dynamic DNS server for you so that's dynamic DNS and how uh, you'd use it on a small business home network. Until next time, bye.